Elon Musk on the border situation in plain and simple terms that even a layman can understand it because the guy is super duper smart. And look at the lighting on me because uh, the thing I'm looking at is shooting back. It's just making me think the future's looking so bright. I've got to wear shades. But here he is talking about it. And, of course, uh, the left, all they want to talk about is a comprehensive bill, a border bill. We need a bill. When Trump in his first term said, well, hey, I'm the commander in chief. I'm going to use the military. Boom. And he starts building over 500 miles of wall. It's amazing what you can get done when you need to get it done because we were being invaded. We were being invaded. And if y'all remember Rush 20 years ago was saying this, what Elon Musk is basically saying now is that it's for votes. It's for more votes for them. I guess if you keep giving people stuff, free stuff, free stuff, free stuff. But I, it seems to me a lot of the, the people that migrated here legally uh, are voting for Trump. Because they're, they're leaving a, a persecuted slum countries. They want the American dream. And we're not going to get it if we just let people pour over the border. I mean, what I see happening under the sort of Biden and Kamala administration is a deliberate attempt to import as many people as possible into swing states like Pennsylvania in order to ensure that America becomes a permanent one-party state. If you, I mean, the numbers are, are truly staggering, and the sort of fake legacy media doesn't report on them. Um, the only reason anyone knows about it is if, if you're on the X platform. But, like, the, it, it's, it's, not, it's crazy. This is from the government website, by the way, which is run by Democrats. So, like, you're seeing, like, in, uh, in some cases, like, 700% increases in the past three and a half years uh, in, in uh, illegals in swing states. What a coincidence. Um, and when you're talking about elections that are won or lost by 10 or 20,000 votes, and then you, you, you bring in 200,000 uh, people, and then you... Uh, put them on the fast track to citizenship. This is without, it, without considering any cheating. Um, this is legalized. Uh, if that happens over the next four years, there will be no swing states. They're importing voters. That is my, I think that's obvious to anyone who looks. And we will have a situation like we have in California where it's, it's, it's a one party state. California is, is a super majority Dem state. Um, and so it's, it's one party rule. And if you have one party rule, that's not a democracy. I do think that we should have a, um, a standardized voting system. We're America. It's 2024. We, we put these, these watermarks on our money, right? Why don't we just go straight out paper ballots, straight across the country with uh, an American seal? some kind of American voting seal that's on this that, that can't be replicated. And no, stop this. You can, people purchasing the voter registration. If you want to get people to register, you physically drive them to a facility or a post office or some kind of government official building that they can go in, show their proof of ID, and they can fill out a voter registration form. Not this on-the-street crap that, that we've been doing for years. Now, I'm not saying everybody that's gone out to do this is, is um, being nefarious. But, hey, people find a way. Other people find a way to screw things up. Or if they're afraid they're going to lose, they're going to cheat. People cheat. Kids cheat in school. People cheat. Come on. But we need to have some kind of watermark, paper ballot. We vote all on the same day. None of this stuff, unless you're in the military and you're overseas, uh, special circumstances, that's it. The rest of us, we go vote that day, and and we have a, a valid driver's license or some kind of valid ID 
that shows who we are, that we are an American citizen. There you have it. Let's do it. This is a clip from Vindicating Donald Trump, and this goes to the core of me suggesting and saying we need a a paper ballot with a watermark on it. And listen to what these guys start talking about, which just blew my mind. I had no idea. Like, I've been under a rock. I didn't know that this stuff was going on. Had no clue. That not only is the 2020 election rigged and stolen, a topic that we exposed in 2000 Mules, but that our election system now is vulnerable, it's riddled with holes. And when Trump says this, the Democrats say, you're attacking democracy. Ernest, we brought you on board as an investigative reporter to dig into this topic. All right, we are on our way to meet a gentleman that is going to show us one of the easiest ways that you're gonna lose your election in 2024. And Rick, you have said to me, Dinesh, if you want to run for office, don't worry about the voters. You just need to hire me. There are so many state laws that give us avenues to buy the ballots, print the ballots, and deliver them f to cross the finish line for victory. There are so many <laughs> loopholes. Wait, wait, wait. Did you actually say the word buy the ballots? <laughs> I said to myself, there's no way that the election can be stolen by simply purchasing ballots or printing ballots. How do you buy a ballot? Uh, you can go to these shops that actually uh, have the ballots and you can buy them straight up. Well, I mean, most people think that to get a ballot, you've got to request one from the state. And you are now making the shocking claim that no, anyone can buy ballots. It's very simple. He purchases the ballots. He goes to any printing company you want in the nation. Certified blank ballot stock used for printing emergency omni ballot VV. And just print them out. That's it. Actually, you can order online and they'll ship it right to your house. How do you actually get all the information on the ballot? Many of the county and secretary of states, you can actually look up what your ballot would look like or and request an absentee ballot for your region and just copy that. Could I print a thousand ballots? So we were able to, the first time, purchase 10,000 ballots. We printed them out. We actually went to some of the election officials and tested the ballots. They verified that they would be read by their machines. Is there any marking on the ballot that makes it impossible for that ballot to be duplicated? Many states do not have watermarks. Most of them don't. A ballot in this respect is very different than, say, a $20 bill, right? There's the presumably all kinds of markings on there that allow a teller to say this is a valid note. So to the degree that ballots are the currency of our democracy, what you're saying is counterfeiting is easy to do. It is because we value money more than our actual votes in this country. And so we don't have the same type of security on the ballots that we do on our dollar bills. That's is insane. counterfeiting of the ballot in the manner you describe illegal? In most states, no, not at all. Press one to speak to an agent. Uh, I called the voter registration office and said, can I make copies of my ballot? Yeah, that's fine. If you're just having it for your own person, that's fine. Yes, okay, that's all I need to know, thank you. You now have 10,000 ballots in your home you have not broken the law? No. You fill out the ballots, you produce 10,000 different signatures on the ballot. Now, I would want to know who are the people who are on the voter rolls who, let's say, haven't voted in the last four elections, so I could actually sign their names. Some of those voter rolls from this. This is what blew my mind, too. And there was uh, Donald Trump's daughter-in-law had came out and said that they had been doing lawsuits the last few months, suing states to clear out their voter registration rolls because people die, people leave the state, and they don't clean it out. And then this is where this comes into play as well. Or just people move, move to a different district, different location in the state, th things of this nature. 
States are free and some are at a low cost. Minnesota is $42. I went to the local register's office, filled out a quick application. I got a list of over a million names. It cost me $35. A million and, names. And you have a list of every registered voter in that county, or you can get the whole state. I then go down the list and see who hasn't voted, and I actually know if I want to vote somebody else's ballot, I can do that. So that's that's cool. right. And so the places I'm going to look for right away, the college, where the students have actually graduated, but they're still registered. The nursing homes where they haven't removed the dead people. The homeless shelters for the people who have actually improved their lives, My but they're God. still registered over here. Now I'm gonna take that same list that you just did, put it in an Excel spreadsheet, and what you're gonna find are these big gaps. And those gaps mean that they didn't vote in any other election. We have access to the national change of address. It's by the U.S. Postal Service and it allows us to do a three-year look back. We can run that against the voter rolls and see who's moved, but the Secretary of State and the auditors hasn't removed them from the voter rolls. What is so maddening about this is that when I move, I notice that everybody else knows, like the DMV knows. Everybody knows. The California Tax Authority knows. However, a notable exception are the voter people who don't track it. The Rasmussen survey found 17% of mail-in voters say that in the 2020 election, they voted in a state where they were no longer a permanent resident. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hi. I'll see if we can get your vote. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. your address? Uh, I'm under a bridge over there. It's okay. We can use the shelter's address. Hey, Tony, yes. Ah, uh, Tony. Tony's your name. How about your last name, Tony? In the district that I want to run in, there's like a homeless shelter. And let's say there are 300 guys who show up for food. I want all their votes. In most states, it's actually recommended to have people go in, register those voters, and then go ahead and give them an absentee ballot and then deliver it back to the county. Are you saying that the absentee ballot application and the ballot itself can be simultaneously filled in and turned in? Yes. And I talked to many homeless people, and they all said that they were registered by their caseworker. Oh, yeah, I just, I, I just registered. Oh, cool. Oh, since I, you know, moved places. Who registered you? You went by yourself? Um, oh, um actually the MSC helped me. Oh, my a social worker. Oh, okay. So I could have 500 ballots coming to that shelter, maybe 200 of the homeless people actually come get their ballots. What happens to the other 300 ballots? Those ballots are up for grabs. And if you're that type of person that will do something like voter fraud, you could just fill those out and put those in. This is crazy in America. This is like third world crap, being dishonest to take over uh, an election and win we need to do something about this. We need to do something about this, people. This is a very alien topic for conservatives and Republicans. Our team focuses on the campaign. Let's have a rally. Let's get our message out. But the other side is actually laser focused on how to make ballots, how to hit nursing homes, homeless shelters. Talk about colleges. Legislatures are passing laws requiring that the Secretary of State collect the names of all of the students and they're allowing them to be registered automatically at the precincts at the school. A student could be from one state, Correct. but let's say going to school in Arizona, for example, suddenly they're registered in Arizona without even their knowledge and if somebody voted their vote in Arizona, they still wouldn't know about it. That's right. That should be illegal. You shouldn't register anybody to vote without their permission. Because what if they want to be an independent? What if they want to be a Democrat? What if they want to be a Republican? This is insane. This is just insane. So now I have my 10,000 ballots and I start filling them out using names off of the voter roll. Wow. Up to this point, it's all legal. The ballots only become illegal once they are cast. A lot of the drop boxes throughout the United States, they're unsecured. There's no video recording. Key point that actually bears on 2,000 mules. They said, Dinesh, you're not showing us the same mule going from one drop box to the other on surveillance, right? And my point was that, first of all, many states didn't do any surveillance at all. The states that did have surveillance, out of 10 drop boxes, there might have been surveillance on one drop box. And you don't have surveillance, there's a great vulnerability for fraud. That's correct.
And we know uh, what a few few days ago uh, uh, there was an attack on one of these drop boxes that was set on fire. Rick, you're my consultant. It's election day. The numbers are coming in. It's getting late in the evening. I'm still behind. Don't worry. We have insiders. Pass in here. Here. Click. We have a few of the election officials that will be there as poll workers that will have opportunities during shift changes to insert the ballots where we need them. We're going to get some approved ballot containers. We have our metal ballot boxes. We're going to go ahead and add that to the cart and see how easy this gets delivered to my front door. What mechanisms are in place equivalent to like a metal detector, but for ballots to make sure no one is bringing ballots in or taking them out? No, there is none. There's, There's so none. much chaos happening here on the floor. I've actually walked in with other people and just and realized that we're in the counting center. No one checks your backpack. No one's checking anything that you're carrying in. So if you have ballots in a backpack and you put them under the table that you're looking at, all and, you have to do is pull those And by the way, even if later they, somebody looks at the surveillance and goes, wait, I see a backpack full of ballots, all you've got to say, well, I just moved them from over there to over here. Nobody can prove that I found I them under the table. They I were under them. the table, and yeah. I'm pulling them out. Here, hey, look, we found some more ballots. We have to count these. And you put those in. Who's going to question you? I mean, this is, to me, the best explanation that exists for how so many people in 2020 with Trump having a commanding lead, could go on television and say, not to worry, it's going to turn our way, as indeed it did. You haven't counted the bad ballots yet. Now, these ballots, they have an envelope that has a name and a signature. They're supposed to do some signature matching. What kind of signature matching is going on? Very little to none. And this is the person making minimum wage. Right. And I've got to go through thousands and thousands of signatures. So guess what I'm doing? Click, 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 click. I mean, right. we, we've actually seen that in past elections, the speed. The speed. It, it looks right. like no one's actually doing any checking. It's just a process of almost automatic approval. Correct, because some states have a deadline as to when these votes have to be counted. Most states actually only compare the signature on the absentee application and the envelope, which happened almost at the same time. So if you have a bad actor that requested the absentee, absentee ballot, their signature is going to match the envelope that's coming back. And once the, the envelope and the ballot are separated, it's a permanent divorce. Under federal and state laws, you are not supposed to associate a voter with an actual ballot. So any type of serial number is not allowed. To date, it looks like no one is held accountable for any of this. No one's held accountable. Not one state, not one county is being held accountable. And the real problem is that for candidates, there's a limited time window. You have seven to 10 days to file a case, otherwise it's over. Sometimes people say, well, when you talk about voter fraud, you gotta remember, Dinesh, that there have been many recounts. Obviously, they haven't uncovered any significant, there may be fraud here or there or this guy or that guy, but there's no systematic fraud. Your recount is not gonna uncover anything new. So you're gonna take the same ballot that have already been put in, maybe fraudulently, and recount those ballots. So you're gonna get the same number. We're not auditing the actual yeah. absentee envelopes, the actual signatures there. We're not even auditing the poll books and we're not even calling voters to determine whether or not they actually voted or not. So a post-election audit is absolutely embarrassing and we shouldn't even be calling it an audit. Now we turn to the tens of millions of illegals the Biden-Harris administration has let into the country. What's their motive? You claim that Democrats, President Biden's immigration plan to open up the border. You said that they're, the president is getting and Democrats are doing it to get more votes. Um, but undocumented immigrants cannot vote in federal elections. So how is that possible? Welcome to the office of the Minnesota Secretary oh of State Elections Division. Hello, election. How may I help you? Yeah, hi. I was calling to see how the vouching works uh, during the election? Okay, so um, when people register to vote, they need to have a proof of residence, and so vouching is one option, and that's where someone that is um, registered 
and thought for someone else that lives in their same precinct. So basically, you know, they'd be saying, I know this person and that they live at this address. Or how many can we vouch for, actually? Yeah, so one voter can vouch for up to eight. Like, they don't have any ID or anything like that. We can at least vouch for them so they can at least register and vote? Yeah, that's the the case where I think it's used most often is if people don't have an ID. All right. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. So if your relatives were to come here from... Oh, my God. This is insane. A voucher program for voting? So if I'm a dishonest person, I could just grab eight illegals and say, come on. Yeah, they, they just they live in my neighborhood. They're my neighbors. We live in an apartment complex. We live in a duplex. But they don't have any ID. All eight of them? India, during voting season, we just go to Minnesota and all eight of them can vote. Hundreds of non-U.S. citizens were registered to vote illegally in Illinois. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, his office found nearly 95,000 people registered to vote, but not U.S. citizens. This man is not a citizen, but he was able to register to vote in Arizona, even got a mail-in ballot for the presidential election. Arizona state law requires proof of citizenship to register, but... Federal law does not. Okay, so we're going to say that Rasmussen asked 2,466 U.S. likely voters if they were citizens. 5.3% said no, but 95% of those voted in 2020. 4% were not sure, but 79% of those voted in 2020. There is no way. So, I think Trump has a legitimate... Look, I don't know if Trump knew about all of this going on because this is all new to me of, of this stuff going on. These shenanigans, that, and apparently this has been going on for decades. This is, this is unbelievable. A voucher? And then they're talking about illegals just being registered? Thousands of them? That that's the make or break an election. It's thousands of them. Good lord. Me that such a process could have come into place by accident. There's got to be a systematic campaign to take down the guardrails or the safeguards for something like this to happen. It is the left that is out there wanting to expand the voting franchise beyond our original intent. We have created all of these opportunities for fraud to enter our system. In 2000 Mules, we exposed election fraud after it happened. Here, we're exposing possible fraud that could happen. Election fraud is part of the standard playbook of tyranny. Tyrants despise legitimate elections where they can be voted out of office, so they seize control of the election process and bend the results to guarantee their victory. Can this be stopped? I want to tell you something that you may find a little shocking, and it's something... This is unbelievable. We've got to set we've got to set some better guidelines. We have got to set some better guidelines. Thing that we've discovered, well it turns out you can buy the legit ballot paper. Download a absentee ballot and I make 10,000 ballots. Well, wow. I mean, do you, do you find this surprising? That's terrifying. The fact that this is America and we're talking about this, it's horrifying. I've never heard of something like this. See, I just said a moment ago, I didn't know if Trump knew about this, the, these shenanigans going on, but I think the left has been doing it a long time. And Donald Trump probably has, probably did get the election stolen from him. If the left knew, knows about this, all these people, they know about this. They're paying people to do this. This is not too far-fetched. How do we have confidence that the 2024 election will not be rigged and stolen? I want to ensure, with my position as co-chair of the RNC, that every single American, when you go cast a ballot in the United States, 
You should feel confident in that vote. This is the number one focus we're gonna have. If you come to the RNC right now, the bulk of the bodies at our offices in Washington, D.C. are solely dedicated to election integrity. We have pledged to have 100,000 people across this country trained as poll watchers. Those are people who actually are just standing and watching, poll workers, people who can physically handle the ballots in these polling locations. We also want to have legal experts in the room. Right now we have 92 lawsuits out in 26 different states. You're supposed to, as secretaries of state, clean your voter rolls. We had a recent issue in Michigan, they had 92,000 people who were inactive voters. These are people who moved out of the state, who have died. The Secretary of State did not want to oblige. If they will not do the things necessary, then we send them a lawsuit. And we've been very successful throughout the course of the past several months with these lawsuits at addressing these really egregious issues. What do you think is going on with these illegals? It's a huge problem. We actually just had a big call with all of the Republican secretaries of state around the country to tell them how they can go in and they can identify non-citizens, take them off those voter rolls, make sure they are not registered to vote. Obviously, we have a problem with the Democrat secretaries of state who do not want to comply with that. We are looking out for any way that people are cheating, any sort of election fraud. Talking about it is not enough. Worrying about it is not enough. We have to get involved and we have to do something. If you have people all across this country who are willing to make it their mission and their goal to take people to the polling locations, to encourage their friends, their family, people they see at church, someone they see in the grocery store on a regular basis, get them out to vote, then we are going to win on November 5th of this year. And I believe it will be an early decision. And we're going to go to bed early on that night. I hope she's right. I really do.